Samurai warriors, strict hierarchies, power struggles. For all the fascinating developments in the history of Japan and the fact that it is one of the longest running independent nations in the history of the world, feudal Japan, like feudalism all over the world, was a rough time for many. A time full of exploitation and violence where land was tilled by indentured servants and farmland used to prop up an elite class that eventually turned on itself. The feudal period of Japan technically lasted from the 1100s well into the 1800s and can be characterized pretty much as dictatorships called shogunates. In 792, the Japanese government ended military conscription. In its place, private armies were formed by feudal lords or daimyos in order to protect their land. The legendary samurai were born. However, at first, they were just a class of people rather than elite warriors. Samurai means attendant and they were used by the daimyos to fight off enemies threatening their power and property. Eventually, the daimyos amassed large armies of skilled warrior samurai who began to wield more power than the government. In 1180, the two most powerful clans, the Minamoto and Taira clans, battled it out for control of the island nation in the Genpei War. This conflict cost estimates of 100,000 lives, both warriors and non-combatants. This led to the foundation of the Kamakura period and the establishment of the shogun system, where shoguns were basically the leaders of the country, despite the fact that there was technically still an emperor. The shoguns and their samurai would rule Japan for the next 700 years. During this time, though, there would be several devastating civil battles that were kicked off over succession disputes. It started with the Oni War in 1467, which resulted in the collapse of the feudal system, the downfall of the Muromachi shogunate, and the fracturing of Japan into hundreds of independent city-states that fought for control of the country for more than a hundred years. And if samurais were not already in imminent danger, it was during this time that ninjas began slinking in the shadows and taking people out. Originally called shinobi, not much is known about these secretive assassins. They seem to have been excluded from much of Japanese history because of their different ways. Ninjas were hired by local daimyos to infiltrate rival lands and create chaos. They would set fire to crops and buildings, collect information that could be used against rivals, and conduct other kinds of secretive raids and guerrilla-style combat. They were used as a kind of status symbol among rival daimyos, basically a muscle flex, and they were usually told to avoid direct combat by any means possible and return to their masters once a job was done. We know their training mostly because of a book called Bansing Shukai, which outlines the methods of these stealth warriors in the remote mountain villages of Iga and Koga. In it, 48 points are laid out for the ninja's fighting techniques in preparation, including how to make weapons out of bamboo, how to make silent shoes, how to use a sword at night, how to listen to small sounds, and how to fight when surrounded by enemies. In 1543, a Portuguese trading ship was blown off course and landed on the island of Tanegashima, where the first Europeans set foot on Japanese soil. It ushered in a period known as the Nanban trade. The term Nanban translates to southern barbarians, and before European contact, the Japanese used it to refer to pirates from southern China and Southeast Asia that began pillaging coastal towns around the turn of the 11th century. But when the Europeans arrived, a few things happened at once. First of all, over 300,000 muskets were introduced to the islands, and this was still during the chaos of the Shengoku period. Now armed with gunpowder and firepower, two powerful warlord daimyos, Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, were able to consolidate power. By 1600, though, Nobunaga had died after unsuccessfully invading China and Korea. The Tokugawa clan would fill the vacuum he left and rule for the next 200 years. The Edo period had begun. During the Edo period, a series of brutal isolationist policies were introduced by the new shogun, Tokugawa Yemitsu. The Closed Country Edict of 1635 made it illegal for any Japanese ship to sail to a foreign country. But it went even farther than that. Any Japanese citizen caught trying to leave the country faced death. 
According to the edict, any Portuguese ship that landed on Japanese soil would be destroyed and all of its crew would be ended. A very dark chapter in the country's history. But despite this, international trade somehow persisted. Korea, China, and the Dutch were still allowed to trade, although with very strict regulations. The Edo period marked a time of incredible art and cultural development in Japan. However, this development was only for the higher classes. The average person in Japan lived in abject poverty. Records from the 1600s show that the average height of men was only 5 foot 1 and women only 4 foot 9. This was because malnourishment was rampant. Families were starving and were even forced to permanently abandon their young so they didn't have as many mouths to feed. To make matters worse, Japan was rocked by a series of famines during the Edo period. The Kaniai Famine lasted for three years from 1640 to 1643, stemming from a rebellion against the Tokugawa shogunate that led to the destruction of cattle and farmland. 100,000 non-combatants lost their lives. 140 years later, the Tenmai Famine led to outbreaks of disease and starvation that would reduce the Japanese population by nearly a million people. In 1783, several volcanoes erupted in quick succession. Volcanic ash suffocated farmland and cut off the sun, which led to colder temperatures that further devastated crop yields. Not a great time to be living on the islands. A huge part of the samurai mentality involved something called Bushido, their code of conduct, which was developed during the Kamakura and Muromachi periods between 1200 and 1500 and then formalized during the Edo period after 1600. Bushido was much more than battlefield tactics. It was an entire framework for how a samurai should live. Values like frugality, righteousness, courage, benevolence, respect, sincerity, honor, loyalty, and self-control were held up on pedestals. Buddhism was a religion of the land at the time, but in general, the samurai actually believed they were doomed to the Japanese version of hell called Jigoku because they were trained to fight and kill. What developed was a very Buddhist state of mind, one where the samurai were said to be unafraid of death. The samurai referred to it as the divine shield. It made them formidable warriors who were completely committed to their craft. The idea of the warrior poet, the noble, educated, disciplined fighter, was really all the rage back then. The only thing the samurai did apparently fear was bringing dishonor to their daimyos, the noble lords they worked for. Bringing dishonor to their lords was a huge no-no. It was so frowned upon that if a samurai committed this highest of sins, he would often take himself out with his own sword in a practice called harakiri. What else do you want to know about feudal Japan? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more nutty history.